Hello ladies and gentlemen, it's Mike here at Game From Scratch and today we're going to be adding another language to our list of game engines by language. We've already covered a number of these. If you head on over to Game From Scratch, you will see we have done C++, Hacks, Lua, and Python. But what we're going to be adding today is JavaScript, which also includes TypeScript and all the various different other JavaScript subset superset languages out there. Uh, by the way, while you are on Game From Scratch, you may notice no more ads, no more cookies, no more analytics. If you like that, please consider either supporting us via these uh, bundles we do advertise or our patron or membership channels whatever so hopefully you do like the new game from scratch and there's new things i'm going to be adding in the future but the best thing that we've done is took away the crap because google is ruining the web all right moving on first one we're going to do is the 3d section and then we'll get into the world of 2d in the world of 3d there are a couple of major players here first one here we've got is play canvas now play canvas is built on top of an open source game engine but the editor itself isn't it's commercial, but there is a free tier available. It's also one of the coolest options out there. Here you can see the editor right there. It's got all of the functionality you would expect, including a full-blown code editor with code completion, etc. available. So if you want to develop your games uh, using a Unity-like experience that runs in the or on the web, Play Canvas could be a good pickup for you. If you want to create your own game engine, you're willing to create your own tools on top of it, the engine itself and the UI framework and all that stuff are open source as well. Available, it's cross-platform, uh, it's built for teams and collaborations. It is a very capable engine, so you can do some really cool stuff. You can see some of the demos available for it, and an idea of some of the people that have used Play Canvas in the past. So if you want, you can check this one out for free, but if you want to have more space, more storage, that kind of stuff, there are commercial tiers involved. Another option we've got is Babylon JS. Now this one, as you can see from the feature list is a very very full feature does not have an editor yet it's one of those things that is in the works uh, but in terms of full 3d functionality babylon js is probably the most capable thing we are going to talk about today uh, technically it's a framework more than an engine doesn't it's really starting to blur the line because we are starting to get some of those world placement tools it's also got integration into tools like blender and max and maya etc as well so you can create your worlds in those and then you know finish them off uh, have them run inside of babylon js uh, Microsoft is the big sponsor of this project, so it is going to stay around for quite a while. I also do believe that within the month, Babylon JS 8 will be releasing. Uh, it's again, it's got an impressive number of features. If you are looking for a framework for doing 3D game development on the web, Babylon is definitely one to consider checking out. Next up, we have Copper Cube. Now, Copper Cube is something I actually did a tutorial series over on Dev Game, I believe it was. A Copper Cube is a very cool engine. It's definitely dated. So you're looking at like DirectX 9 looking games here, but now it's also free. Uh, there is an up-tiered version of Available Professional, but you can start creating games with this no coding required at all. So you see here again, no coding required. Although you can extend it using JavaScript. So you can use like this built-in visual uh, setup system, but if you want to extend it, you can then use JavaScript. In my tutorial, I do believe I cover JavaScript options there. Uh, and you can see, um, uh, it's available for a Windows and Mac. Again, it is uh, there is a free tier of this now available, which is quite a cool development. Next up, we have Cocos Creator. Now, Cocos Creator is built on top of Cocos 2DX. Now, interestingly enough, they don't seem to have a single screenshot of their editor on their website, which is bizarre. Uh, but Cocos Creator is built on top of Cocos 2DS, 2DX. It is kind of like... Um, Play Canvas in that regard, but this one runs locally on your machine. It also uses TypeScript and JavaScript out of the box. This is, again, probably the closest thing you're going to get to Unity, but using JavaScript like TypeScript instead. Uh, it's really big in Asia, a little bit less so this side of the pond, but again, another cool 3D option, especially if you want to have that Unity-like experience. You can see the editor here in this weird angle. It's actually, it's weird that they don't advertise the editor a little bit more because it is actually a really nice looking engine. And then we've got these two. So we got two of these that I'm going to cover. They're very tangential. Uh, so they're not necessarily uh, game engines per se. What they are is interfaces for making Blender projects webbable. So you can create your things in the web. So you can, again, you can create games. It even says right there from visualizations to games or you can create like product demos, etc. You can do your game logic using the JavaScript programming language, but all of your world and your content, etc., are creating created using Blender. And now this one was uh, spun off. Some of the people behind it went off and created a project called Verge 3D. Very similar concept for bringing Blender content 
over to the web. And on top of that, uh, you also have uh, Max Maya versions as well. Uh, but you can use JavaScript, but there's also this visual programming style language as well. And then we've got 3.js. Now, 3.js is a framework. A lot of things are actually built on top of 3.js. And that's one of those things you're going to find in the world of JavaScript and why I may have missed something that you liked. There's just a lot of projects out there. It's very, the barrier of entry to creating your own thing in JavaScript is quite low. And a lot of it is because of things like 3.js. So if you want to have a 3D game engine, you basically just build your tooling on top of 3.js and you are good to go. It provides all of the functionality you could imagine including VR support. There are a ton of examples available for you as well. And then we got A-Frame, which, as I mentioned, is built on top of 3.js. To give you an example, now A-Frame is about creating 3D worlds using like markup, sort of like VRML back in the day, uh, but you can also extend it using JavaScript as well. So if you want to create easy 3D worlds, uh, you can basically create them using A-Frame, which again is built on top of the 3.js library. Uh, and then we have this one, and that's Godot JS. Now, I actually recently did a video about the various different programming language options available for Godot, and one of them was Godot JS. And what this does is adds TypeScript and JavaScript support for Godot 4.x. I do believe using GD extensions, uh, high performance capabilities of V8, which is the JavaScript runtime, uh, to uh, bring the delightful development experience of TypeScript into Godot. Meanwhile, it also supports switching to Quick JS, JavaScript Core, or even running your scripts directly. So, if you want to create uh, JavaScript or TypeScript logic inside of um, the Godot game engine. That's what this one is all about. And that is it for 3D. Uh, now let's move on to the 2D side. Now we've got a lot of players in the world of 2D. There's a lot that I did not cover. They need to be currently under active development, but I may have just missed some. So again, if I miss something, do let me know. But one of the biggest players out there is definitely Phaser. Now, one of the things Phaser didn't have before was an editor. It had pretty much literally everything else. By the way, it also uses something else later on as a rendering backend. We'll get to that, spoiler alert, in a bit. Uh, but what you will find, again, Phaser now does have this editor available as well. This, this Phaser editor, this should be a third-party project. It is now integrated directly into it, which is quite cool. So basically, Phaser is probably the most full functioning 2D framework out there. It supports literally everything, tweening, animations, sound, movies, you name it. And there's just so many examples of it available as well. So if you're interested, Phaser is one of the coolest projects out there. Uh, another one we've got is Melon.js. Fresh, modern, and lightweight, and that's literally all I know about it, other than the fact it's still under development. So I can't give you a bit, I can't give you too much of a rundown on this one uh, because I don't know too too much about it. Uh, your scene graph is a hierarchy of containers. Updates and drawing operations are dispatched separately. Uh, draws are opt in, add compute only, renderable for AI special effects, etc. There is level editor support via the tiled map editor, so you can load tiled maps in into your game uh, and run them, as you can see right there as an example. And here are your features of this engine. And it's very small. So it's like under uh, under 100,000 kilobytes once minified, and it runs on most of the major browsers out there. So that is Melon.js, one that I've never used it myself, so I can't give you too much of an opinion on it. Another one we've got here is GDevelop. Now, GDevelop is not technically uh, a JavaScript engine, but you can extend it using JavaScript. This is a uh, like a no-code style engine. Uh, I've covered it a number of times on the channel. I'm a big fan of GDevelop. Now, I do find it interesting. They, they don't actually have a, a screenshot of the, the engine on the front page either. This is just a common trend. I'm not getting it uh, between them and uh, the, uh, I think it was, Oh God, uh, Coco's Creator didn't have anything either. By the way, if you want to go ahead and check it out, it's completely hosted online. Uh, and you can see right here, pick a course, go on in, let's go. And then you get an idea of what it looks like. So it's got full blown editing capabilities. But on top of that, it has like this visual programming language. Like you can see here, this flow chart type approach to your coding. And you can extend all of this using the JavaScript programming language. Next up, we have a very similar option to GG Develop, which is called Construct 3. I think Construct 3 was, or Construct in general, was around first. Uh, again, you can see some of the examples of the code in this cube as we scroll by. Again, entirely visual based, but if you'd like, you can add JavaScript in, mix and match between the two. So you can do your extension with JavaScript, or as you can see here, you can literally just do inline JavaScript. Uh, it has probably better integration to JavaScript than GDevelop does. GDevelop is more about you extend GDevelop itself. In this case, you can literally embed JavaScript in, or you can actually extend it using JavaScript as well. I think an idea of what the editing environment is there. I haven't actually checked out Construct in a couple of years. If you've got an opinion on this one, do let me know in the comments down below. And then we have Excalibur JS. Now, this one is on the list as a bit of an anomaly because this is the only one that is built directly 
as a TypeScript game engine. Your friendly TypeScript 2D game engine called Excalibur JS. I don't know. Anyways, it is made with TypeScript. Again, TypeScript is a superset of JavaScript. So generally you should be able to use JavaScript as well if you wish to do so. Designed for cross-platform, it is free and open source. And that's about all I can tell you because quite frankly, never used it. So if you're interested in learning more, again, the link is down there. If you've used Excalibur and you have an opinion of it, please do let me know in the comments down below. Uh, and then we've got RPG Maker MV. Now I picked this one uh, kind of out of, I think there's another option which would be MZ, but don't quote me on that. But RPG Maker over time, this is a G JRPG style tool for creating um, games. So you can see here, JRPG Maker right, in action. So if you're making that JRPG style battler games, you can see you've got the fights like you've got from old school Final Fantasies as an option. Uh, and this thing has been used to make ages an absolute ton of games over time. They've created uh, so many different versions of this over like the years, like 2000 XP, uh, VX, VX Ace, and so on and so forth. I don't even know what the current one is right now. And the reason I'm talking about this particular version is it uses JavaScript. Uh, now, since then, they've had, at some point in time, they used Ruby, and I don't even remember what they're using these days, but they change up their programming, programming language quite often. And realistically, a lot of times, that's really all they change. The, the versioning, the, the amount that they change when they add new versions is very minimal. Uh, so if you want to go back in time, uh, you could use M. V or I think MZ, and they use the JavaScript programming language. All other versions use something else. Another one we've got here, and this one actually could be have, could have been on a couple of other lists. I'll probably add them back onto the list for the other ones, but I did not cover them in the video. And it's something called Micro Studio. This is a free game engine, runs online. It is a kind of a great introduction to the world of game development. Uh, if you are a beginner, this would be one of the things I would recommend checking it out. Now, it uses its own programming language. You can see it right here. It's like this Lua-esque programming language designed to make it just as easy as possible. However, this is the key part. Micro Studio shines by its simplicity and interactivity, but you can also code in JavaScript, Python, or Lua if you prefer. So uh, it does have, and by the way, this thing does have all the tooling you would expect to create a game. It's a very cool project. If you've never checked out Micro Studio before, I would recommend doing so. And again, if you want to use JavaScript, that is an option. And then we've got this one. This is Microsoft Make Code Arcade. Now this is actually probably my number one recommendation for new people wanting to make their first game. You can literally learn to create a game in one day. It is heavily based off of um, MIT Project Scratch, where you use these graphs, basically, of things to put together. And then over here, you can pick a sprite, put your sprite in place, and done. And there is your sprite being drawn. Uh, you can have new logic here. So game logic in here, like put an if condition in. And if something fits inside of the if, that block goes together, put it inside a start, and you are good to go. This is a wonderful tool for introduction to the world of game development. And one of the things that's kind of unique to MakeCode Arcade and where it could have fit in earlier examples as well, uh, you can actually switch over to JavaScript at any time. You could also switch over to Python. So again, should have probably covered that in my Python one, didn't. Uh, but you can switch between them or you can switch back to blocks. Now I have been told this can get a little bit buggy, so you probably wanna pick one language and stick to it, but you can start with blocks and then switch over to JavaScript language uh, and go from there. And the cool thing about this, is it's just such a wonderful runway for learning these things in the first place. So that is Make Code Arcade. Uh, next up we have Kaplay. Now this is actually, I think, uh, an update of Kaboom, which has been uh, abandoned. I don't really have any actual opinion on this one. So it's enjoyable API based off uh, based on blocks. As you can see a uh, code example of it. Here is adding an object into the world, destroying said object, adding custom components to objects, uh, and so on. So again, I've never actually used Kaplay, so I can't tell you what it's actually like to work with. But if you do want to go check out Kaplay, the cool thing is they have this, which is a playground. So you can see here the code for writing a sprite onto the screen. And then here, like say, for example, I could go to 500, oops, 500, like so. Uh, I thought that would have updated on the fly, so maybe I need to play it again. Uh, oh, run, over here. So there, boom, I've moved my item over. So you've got this interactive sandbox to play with things. You do have uh, sprites and fonts, etc. that you can load from down here. So there is this playground available, so if you wanna go out and check out 
to play, you can do so. Next up, we have Stage. Now, Stage.js, yes, I actually have literally zero experience with. I think this might have been inspired by Stage, uh, which was part of uh, the Flash world for a while. Again, I don't actually know. I, I have literally zero experience with Stage.js. The cool thing about it here is it is uh, free. It's cross-platform, HTML development. Uh, you see some example games created with it. Uh, here are their, their feature set, which is very minimalistic. And um, I have, again, zero experience with this one. So if you're interested, it's another option out there. And then we're getting into, again, another one of those tools. Like when we were in the world of 3D, there was 3JS that other things build on top of. Here we've got Pixie.js, which is a cross-platform 2D WebGL renderer. So if you need to do, you know, sprite drawing, rendering graphics as fast as possible in the browser, Pixie makes a bunch of sense to build on top of. And this is one of those things that makes it so that the barrier of entry to creating your own game engine or framework inside of the JavaScript environment is really simple because you can bring all these pieces and build on top of them. For example, Phaser, which we talked about earlier on, uses Pixie as one of its rendering options. Uh, again, not technically a game engine, but very full functioning as far as rendering goes. And here we're very not a game engine, but I thought I'd mention this one in the next one anyways, just to make the list complete. And that is Matter.js. This is a physics engine for the web. And then we've also got Ammo.js, which is based off of the bullet physics as engine ported over to the web as well. So there are a number of libraries out there. I kind of just wanted to showcase that aspect with this uh, that are available beyond what I'm talking about. So that, ladies and gentlemen, is it. Again, I will have it updated over here on this list. And once again, when you head on over to Game From Scratch, no more ads other than affiliate stuff, which I think you may find interesting or nice anyways, and no more analytics. So hopefully you guys like that. And there's going to be some new stuff coming to Game From Scratch soon. If you guys have recommendations about that, please do let me know in the comments down below as well. So ladies gentlemen, that is JavaScript game engines in 2025. What do you think? Let me know. Comments down below. Talk to you all later. Goodbye.